Hey guys, what's up? My name is Lance. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you have been here before. If not, please take a minute and just go down there, click that subscribe button, come join the little family we got over here. It would mean the world to me, truly. Also, at the end of this video, if you guys end up liking the video, please go ahead and click that like button. It helps me out a lot more than you guys know. It helps us so that more people can see my videos and hear my story, and I would truly appreciate it. So, as you guys can tell by the title of this video, today I'm going to be telling you guys about um, a little experience that I had um, with going to jail and how I was outed in jail by an ex of mine and kind of tell you just a couple stories of what happened um, in jail while I was locked up um, after everybody found out. So um, if you guys are interested in hearing more about that, just please continue watching. Okay, let's get into it, guys. So let me just start from, from the beginning, what happened. So um, back in 2012, you know, I was full-blown into my addiction, and um, I was dating somebody at the time. Um, and me and him were getting into trouble at that time. You know, if you guys watched any of my previous videos, you would have seen that, you know, this is at the point where we were getting into a lot of trouble. So anyway, anyway excuse me. Um, he had went out and gotten in trouble one night without me. I had stayed home that night for whatever reason. And um, I was waiting for him to get back to the house, waiting up all night. He never showed up. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, something bad obviously happened. I couldn't get a hold of him. His cell phone was going right to voicemail. I'm like, fuck, what happened, you know? Um, so anyways, he never showed up. Morning comes, I'm calling around to all the hospitals. I'm trying to figure out if anything happened. I'm calling police stations, boom. I end up calling the police station, found out that he did get arrested. So he was in trouble and ended up going to jail. Um, fast forward a couple days, maybe like a week. Um, at this point, I went out one night by myself, you know. Um, again, he was locked up already. I was out by myself. Um, I ended up getting in trouble this night. Um, this is when I was going to rob that ba that bicycle store that I told you guys about. Stupid fucking idea, but, you know, I obviously wasn't thinking clearly, so... And like I told you, I didn't even go into the store. I ended up running away, got arrested later on that night at my mother's house, um, and then went to the police station overnight whatever, or for a night, or, I don't know if it was one night or two, I can't remember, and then went to court on Monday morning, and they did not let me out, I ended up going to jail, so, um, fast forward a little bit, so I'm in jail, um, and I go in there, and I'm obviously expecting to see my boyfriend in there, right, but he was nowhere to be found when I got there, so I'm like, I didn't know what was going on, this was my first time ever actually being locked up and being sent to jail, I'd been in trouble before, but I always got bailed out, or, you know, the judge let me out, or whatever the case may be, so I'm there, and I'm there for like two weeks, he's not there, um, and then one day, I'm just sitting there, sitting in the pod, and I see my boyfriend come through the door and he comes in in a wheelchair all bandaged up he's got a cast on both of his legs both his legs were broke and I ended up talking to him and found out later on what had happened was that the cops basically beat the shit out of him um long story short they fucked him up bad and tried blaming it on him they tried saying he tried running away and when he ran away he ended up running into a brick building um, at full speed and that shattered his legs and he had dog bites on him too they fucking let the canines bite the shit out of him so he had dog bites all over his body broke both of his legs blah 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 the cops fucked him up he didn't run in an old building they they did that shit so we were in the same pod for a little bit right um and then i ended up getting bailed out my grandparents ended up coming through eventually and i got bailed out and he was stuck in there i couldn't afford his bail i just couldn't do it um so he was stuck in there for you know a couple months as i went back home and uh he ended up getting moved into another pod or whatever switched over to another pod he got out of the intake pod that we were both in, went to another pod. And, of course, I'm at home, so we were writing back and forth. You know what I mean? I would write him letters, he would write me letters, and we were together. So they were, 
you know, relationship letters, you know, talking about whatever, I love you this, that, da, 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 talking about all things relationship, you know what I mean? And um, eventually he ended up getting out. Um, I'm not sure if he got bailed out or whatever, but anyway, he ended up getting out and ended up leaving all those letters in his jail cell with my name on it and, and pictures I had sent him of me, my face, you know what I mean? Left everything there in the cell. So fast forward down the line a little bit, a couple months go by, I end up getting in trouble again, like I had told you guys. Ended up going to jail, boom. I go into jail, I'm in the intake pod for a couple weeks, then they transferred me over to C pod, which is the pod that he had been in where he left all those letters. So I'm not even thinking about it, you know? At this point, I'm not thinking anything crazy. Um, I'm just getting moved to a new pod. The second that I walk up in that new pod, all eyes on me. I had fucking 100 eyes on me and everyone's just looking at me. All these dudes fucking grilling me, grilling me. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And um, people were kind of just like like being mad weird, being shady. And uh, one dude ended up coming up to me and he's like, yo, your boyfriend left all these fucking, left all your letters in his cell. So you a faggot, you a faggot, and was just kind of talking shit to me, and I'm like, fuck, you gotta be kidding me. So I was outed in jail, not even my own doing. So at that point, everybody in that pod knew that I was gay. Every dude up in there had read all the letters, seen all the pictures, everything, you know, talk about humiliating, fucking humiliating. So that was the beginning of my wonderful stay in jail. Um, so everybody knew at that point. Some people wanted to act like they were disgusted by it, and that they weren't fucking with me because of it. And then some people would try to be like the macho man and try to like flirt with me, but act like they were just trying to be a dick about it and da da da. And then as you've seen in, uh, in documentaries and on movies and stuff, in jails and prison, the gay scene is there. Whether people want to admit it or not, whether it's gay for the stay, whatever you want to call it, it's there. And when I tell you, it's the people in there that you would least expect. I'm talking about the most gangsta dudes, the the biggest thugs, the gang members, the dudes with the worst charges, the alpha males in the pot, the loudest ones, the most violent ones, the dudes fighting all the time, the, the big mouths, you know what I'm saying? The people you would least expect in there are the ones that are getting down on the low. And I'm telling you this from my own experience. So I want to say I was in there for like, a couple weeks at this point, just minding my own business, whatever. Everybody knew at this point there was nothing I could do about it. I minded my own business anyway, right? Um, one day, this dude, this Spanish dude, he was big, man. This dude was like six foot five, big motherfucker. One of the biggest guys in there at that point. Um, loud as hell. He was like the alpha macho man in there, you know? Always had to be loud, intimidating, had to just make himself known, tried to make sure everybody was afraid of him, whatnot. You get it, right? Um, and I had, we'd spoken a couple times, but not really because we didn't really have anything to speak about, you know? One day I'm just sitting downstairs and his cell was upstairs on the second floor of the pod. And I'll never forget it. I'm just looking around and I look up and I see him. He's standing by his cell door and he's just standing there looking out. And he looks down at me and he's like, yo. And he nods his head like this. And then he goes, like kind of nodding me up there to come up. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck is this about? I don't know this guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I walk up there and I'm like, what's up? And he's, I get up there and he's laying on his bunk. And I get to the door, he's like, yo, come in, come in. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, I walk in, I'm like, what's up? Everything good? He's like, yeah, close the door, bro, close the door. So I close the door, thinking he wanted to like talk to me about some business. I didn't know at this point, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I go in there and I sit down on the stool in there and he's laying on his bed and he's just laying back, you know, got his hands back like this. He's like, what's up? What's up with you? And I'm like, nothing. And he starts talking to me and <clears throat> basically, um, in other words, starts like hitting on me, like legit starts hitting on me. And he's talking about, yo, so, so you're, you're gay, you're bi, whatever. I was like, I'm bisexual. Why? I'm like, what's what does it matter you know you feel me like and he's like oh no he's like that's what up he's like i think that's cool he's like i have no problem with that shit you know he's like he's like asking me questions he's like do you think um 
just because dudes mess around with another dude once in a while that makes them gay he's like i don't think that makes somebody gay he's like if you mess around with a guy every once in a while do you think that makes somebody gay and i'm like look bro i don't really care like what are you trying to say to me and he starts rubbing on his you know what and he's rubbing it and he keeps talking to me about it and he's like yo come sit on the bed come sit on the bed and i'm like i'm good bro like i'm all sad like what you trying to do and then he basically came out and straight up told me like Yo, I've been checking you out. He's like, when your boy was in here, when your boyfriend was in here, he used to braid my hair and we would chill and da da da. And he's like, he was mad cute. And he basically came out to me, in other words. And I'm telling you, this is the dude you would least expect. This dude was like straight thugging, big ass motherfucker, like scary looking dude. And he's basically trying to get me to hook up with him in his cell. And you're not allowed to be in anybody else's cell that's not your own. And you know the officers walk around and they do rounds and they and they check. So all of a sudden we could hear the keys jingling of an officer coming up and going walking up on his tier, looking in the cells and he's like, yo, yo, the CO's coming. He's like, get down, get under the bed. So I'm like, yo, this is fucking crazy. I cannot get caught being in this dude's cell. Like, what am I gonna say? What am I doing in here? So I get down on the floor, yo, this is a true story. And I curl up under his... It's like this much room for me to squeeze under, underneath the bottom bunk in the cell. And I get up under there, and I'm curled up under, and the officer comes in, and he's talking to him, and he's like, what are you doing? Like, how you been? You staying out of trouble, man? Da -da. And they're, like, talking, and I'm sitting under there, like, what the f*** is going on? You know what I mean? Like, this cannot be happening. Eventually, the officer walked, and then when he walked by, I got up, and I'm like, yo, I gotta get out of here. I'm like, nice, nice talking with you. I'm out. So I left, and, um... From that point on, that dude was always just kind of like giving me side eye and like checking me out. It's you heard what nothing ever. I'm recording. Now, the one and one nothing ever years. happened ever because I don't get down like that. That's just not me, and I would never. Anyway, with that dude, even you know what I mean. Like that just wasn't my speed. So that happened. Um, another story happened with uh, this kid, this white kid who um, was like a little scrappy dude like he was real nice body amazing body like he used to work out all the time and he was always fighting dudes though like straight troublemaker troublemaker so i tried staying away from him and i knew him on the streets but i knew his girlfriend and i knew their their daughter and shit they used to live in the building right next to me um i had gotten in trouble one time so we were in the hole together because i was doing like 10 or 15 days in the hole for something and um and there you're locked in there 23 hours a day, right? So he would get up and he'd like always like just be butt ass naked walking around our cell because he I was a cellmate with him in the hole and like grabbing on his shit and whatever. And then like I could hear him at nighttime like, you know, playing with his thing and doing his thing and like whatever. And then one night he asked me to um, basically jump down onto his bunk and he's like, yo, He's like, I've been feeling you. And he tells me, he's like, yo, I'm, you know, I want to do this with you. And, da, da, da. and he's like, yo, take off your clothes. Take off your clothes. He's like, you don't even have to do nothing to me. He's like, let me please you. And I'm like, yo, I'm not with it. I'm sorry, bro. And again, another kid that you would least expect. And then I had this other dude, right, who was in there for attempted murder. He was waiting to go upstate to prison. And, um he would always be giving me stuff like giving me all kinds of like food and commissary and like snacks and like whatever i wanted he would give it to me and he would write me notes so one day I, he had slipped a note under my cell door and um the note was basically he was writing to me about all the stuff that he wanted to do to me and i'm like yo this is like crazy because and i didn't ask for none of this you know what i mean i didn't act like you know i'm not a real feminine guy Yes, I'm bisexual, but I'm not feminine like that. Nobody really would have knew if my dumbass ex didn't leave all those fucking letters and pictures in his cell. It was completely his fault. And now I'm in here, stuck in here, and have to deal with this shit. Um, and I just wasn't getting down like that. That's just not not how I roll. I'm not with that. So it was super embarrassing, and um, it really opened up my eyes to to see that what you see in the movies and on in, in documentaries and, and stuff like that is for real it's for real man and a lot of most of these guys have women they have girls at home writing them visiting them they got children and while they're in there they're getting down they're getting down and doing their thing and look 
don't let anybody lie to you. I don't care what nobody says. I lived it. I experienced it. And that guy wrote me that note telling me everything he wanted to do to me and anything you need, I got you. He's like, as long as you're in here with me, you'll never have to go without nothing. You need food, come holla at me. You need whatever you need, come just get at me. I got you. So it was crazy. And um, there was other times, you know, other things that happened too throughout my in and out of being locked up. But all I want to say is that um, being locked up was probably the lowest and worst experience of my life. And I just want to tell everybody, please stay out of trouble. Please just don't break the law. Just don't even put yourself in that situation because I promise you there is no darker place you can be than being locked up and having your freedom taken and being locked in a place like that. There's no worse place that, that you can be. I was so miserable in there. There was people in there that it was like second nature to them, you know? They were more comfortable there than they are on the streets at home. And because they're in there all the time. And they'd be laughing and having a good time. And I would just look around at these people like, I don't ever want to be that comfortable in here, you know? Like, And I never was. And I never laughed. I never smiled. I never enjoyed it in there. Not one single day. I was fucking miserable. And I held on to that when I got out of there. And I said, I will never never go back there and i have not until this day fingers crossed knock on wood but i think now and i think about consequences and i think about my time being in there and i want to tell you guys i beg of you beg of you if you're doing wrong please stop now find a way out do whatever you have to do because that is the last place you guys want to be so i love you guys thank you so much for listening i hope this video is a little interesting entertaining if nothing else but it's a true story and I wanted to bring it to y'all and just let you guys know a little bit of the inside scoop on what goes on in there from my own personal experience. I love you guys. Stay beautiful. Stay blessed. You guys are worth worth happiness. You're worth sobriety. And you guys are worth it. I love y'all.